check the mic and make sure it sound right boy hey guys welcome to the sysadmin tutorials youtube channel we're going to kickstart 2022 with an aws cloud formation tutorial so with aws cloud formation we're going to be using some yaml files that we've created in the background here and with those yaml files input into cloud formation we are going to be able to automate the installation of an EC2 Linux instance and an EC2 Windows instance. Now, if you remember back a while ago, and I'm going to put this up on screen right here, we did do some videos on uh, creating an EC2 Linux instance and creating an EC2 Windows instance. And in those videos, we did do that the manual way where we just went through, used the wizard, we clicked next, next, next a few times, entered in a couple of uh, input parameters, and then AWS went along and created our uh, instances. So with CloudFormation, we're just gonna be using that YAML file and we're gonna be inputting that into CloudFormation, creating a stack and letting that stack go ahead and create our EC2 instances for us automatically. So with that being said, up on screen here, we do have the console login for AWS and I'm gonna go ahead and just log in right now. Now, once we've logged into our console, I am in the North Virginia region, which you can see up on the top right hand side here of the screen. Now, we're just going to go into search and we're just going to type in CloudFormation. Once CloudFormation comes up, go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Create Stack. Now, before we create the stack, I'm just going to bring up the YAML file and the script that we're going to be using to create our EC2 instances. Now up on screen, I have opened up the two YAML files, one being for the Linux server and the other one for the Windows server. Now don't worry about copying down all the code that you're seeing here up on screen because I am going to be providing this code to you from my GitHub page and that I'm going to be providing in a link in the description below. So check that out and then you can go ahead and change any of these YAML files to suit your environment. Now, starting from the top, we just do have a short description here and then we jump into the parameters. So within the parameters here, so the parameter is called latest AMI ID. And what that does is it goes out and it looks for the latest AMI ID for Linux. And then later on, we can reference that latest AMI ID parameter uh, within the script, which we'll show you shortly. So moving on, we now have our resources. So our resource is our instance. So the instance is going to be called web server one and the type is a AWS EC2 instance. We then have the properties of that instance and we have the instance type being t2.micro and then we have the image ID. So you can see here the image ID references latest AMI ID, which is the parameter sitting up the top here. We then move on to the security groups. So what security group is going to be attached to this uh, Linux EC2 instance? And again, we're referencing web server security group. And that is located down here. We then move on and we're going to enter in a tag for our EC2 Linux instance. And it's just going to be a tag of name and the value being web server one. Now in the user data field, so this is going to be our script that's going to run within the operating system. So once the EC2 is up and running, it is going to run this user data script and it's going to create the web server for you. So first up, it's just going to run some updates with the yum update minus Y. And then we're going to be installing HTTPD. When HTTPD is installed, we then start the service and then we, we then set it to start on each reboot. And that's that check config HTTPD on. Following on from that, we then change directory into var www html. And then we start creating our index.html file. And so basically we're just echoing certain text into the index.html file here. And the important thing to see or to notice on this uh, user data is the curl command. So the curl command is referencing AWS metadata within the EC2 instance. And that metadata then produces a value. So say for example, here we're referencing the metadata of public host name and that public host name will then be entered into index.html. So we move on, we've got another call command here which is referencing or grabbing the information and finding out what instance type the EC2 instance is. And then we go on and we have a look at the local IPv4 and the public IPv4 
and public host name, which is basically the DNS name of the EC2 instance. Once we go through that, our web server security group. So here we need to create a firewall rule pretty much, which allows port 80 through from the internet to our web server. And you can see here that the type is our AWS EC2 security group. We have a description here, which is basically just enable port 80. We then tag the security group with a name of web server SG for security group. And then we've got our security group ingress rules. So the IP protocol is TCP and we are using port 80 and we're allowing a source IP of basically any IP uh, out there. So 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. So now let's return back to CloudFormation. Now we're going to leave it on template is ready. And then down here, we're going to select upload a template file. We're going to go choose file and we're going to choose our Linux YAML file. Once our Linux YAML file has been uploaded, we're going to click on next and we're going to give the stack a name. So I'm just going to say Linux EC2 web server and click on next. Now we are going to leave the tags and the permissions as is. And I just want to show you the stack failure options. So if the stack goes along and it's going through our YAML file and runs into an issue, it can either roll back all the stack resources and delete everything it's created so far, or it can actually just preserve the successfully provisioned resources that it has provisioned. So uh, I usually just leave this on roll back all stack resources. Uh, and then that way I'd rather go back, fix the code and then reprovision the instance uh, again. However, if you do have multiple resources that you are provisioning, you may want to consider using preserve successfully provisioned resources. So really up to you. Within advanced options, uh, we're going to leave all that as default and we're going to click on next. Now up the top here, we've got our Linux web server YAML file. And if we just scroll down, we'll leave all this and we'll get to the bottom and we'll go and click on create stack. Now on the left hand side, you've got the stack here and you can see it's got create in progress. And then on the right hand side, you've got all the events that have occurred so far. So if I click on refresh, you can see that that's now going through and progressing through that YAML file. So we just need to click refresh a couple of times here to get some updates. And we're just waiting for the left hand side here for the actual stack name to say complete. And I've just clicked the last refresh and you can see on the left hand side, we've got create complete. So let's move along into our EC2 instance and have a look. So I'm going to click on services and up the top, I'm going to type in EC2, click on EC2 and go to instances. And here we have our web server one, which is running. We're still waiting for the status checks. So I might just refresh it here a few more times. Okay, so we've got our two out of two checks passed. And if I just click on web server one, now down the bottom here, we've got our public IPv4 address, and we've also got the public IPv4 DNS. So if you just copy either one of them by clicking on the two little boxes on the left. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a new tab and we're gonna browse with HTTP, because remember that's port 80 and that's the security group that we created in the YAML file. And then it's just gonna be HTTP colon slash slash and then the IP address or the public IPv4 DNS address. And that should take us through to the web page on web server one. And here we go, we've got our website here, sysadmin tutorials EC2 Linux demo. And then we've got all this information here, which is actually pulled out of the metadata. So if you remember back when we had a look through the YAML file script and we were in the user data section, we were using curl and then HTTP colon slash slash 169.254.169.254. And then we'd pull out the metadata of, for example, the server host name, the instance type, the internal IP address, external IP address, and the um, external DNS address as well. So that grabbed all that information, put it into the index.html, and displayed that as a web page here for us to have a look at. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go back to CloudFormation here. So what we've got up on screen here is our stack that we created, the Linux EC2 web server. And what I'm going to do is just click on the left hand side here to select it. And then we're going to go on to delete. Now this is going to delete this stack and all the resources that that stack created. So our Linux EC2 instance is going to be deleted from AWS. So I'm going to click on delete stack. 
the delete has been initiated and now it's going through and deleting our EC2 instance. If I open up the EC2, we can see that the instance state is shutting down and then it will go to a terminated state. Now again, back here in cloud formations, we can click refresh and the stack has been deleted. Let's go back into EC2. We'll click refresh here. And you can see web server one has been terminated. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process, but we're gonna do that for our Windows EC2 server. Now the only difference here really is that we're gonna be using PowerShell to create the web server and uh, ingest all that information into our index.html file. So once again, let's click on create stack within CloudFormation. We're gonna select upload a template file and then we're gonna go choose file. I'm going to select my EC2 Windows Web Server YAML file. And before we do that, let's just go and have a look what it looks like. So basically we have the same description uh, parameters, except in the parameters, getting the latest AMI ID, it's actually just getting the latest image for uh, Windows Server 2019. Now we go through the resources are pretty much all the same until we get down to user data. So in user data, we're using PowerShell here and we're using PowerShell scripts to create the web server on our Windows Server 2019. Once we've created the web server, which you can see here, install Windows feature name web server, uh, we change directory into inet pub www root. We then remove isstart.star, which is just some files that come when you first install uh, IIS. And then we set a variable and we invoke a REST method to grab the metadata from the local instance. And this is similar to what we saw on the Linux uh, script where we're using curl. Uh, this time we're using invoke REST method URI and then the metadata URL. So you can see here we're getting the local IPv4, public IPv4 and public host name. We then get the local host name of the Windows server and we get the instance type. Now, as a bit of a bonus, we also get the operating system version. And then we create the index.html file. And we set index.html as a variable for dollar file name. So we don't have to keep referencing index.html. We are just going to reference dollar file name. Now we're going to add content to dollar file name, which is index.html. And we're going to add a break. Then we're going to add a heading of sysadmin tutorials EC2 Windows demo. We're going to put in bold your server host name is, and then we're going to print out the host name, which is dollar host name. So if we have a look at what dollar host name is, dollar host name is up here, and it just equals the host name of the operating system. We then have a break, and then we got in bold your instance type is, and then dollar instance type. So dollar instance type is whatever was populated within invoke rest method URI and then the metadata, uh, latest metadata slash instance dash type. We then move on with another break. We get the, your internal IP address is, and we populate that with internal IP address, which was populated into the variable dollar local IPv4. Another break, we then get the external IP address, another break, and then we get the public DNS, uh, and that's populated with um, whatever was in dollar public host name variable. After that, we move on and we've got our web security groups here. So pretty much exactly the same as what we had for Linux. We're allowing port 80 to come through from the internet, from any IP address. And the name of this security group is called web server dash SG for security group. So let's return back to cloud formation. And now before I'm going to click on next, I'm going to click on view in designer because you can see this as a graphical representation as well. So let's click view in designer. And here we have our web server one instance, which is attached to web server dash SG security group. Um, down the bottom here, you can see the code that was used. And within the designer, we can also click on this little tick here, which is gonna validate the template. As you can see up the top here, it did say template is valid. Now to return back to the wizard so that we can actually go ahead and create the stack. We're going to click on this little cloud with the up arrow. And if you hover over the top of it, it does say create stack. So let's click on that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll click on next. 
Now we'll give the stack a name. So I'm just going to call mine Windows EC2 Web Server. And you can see here that it set the parameter for latest Amy ID and it set that for the 2019 Windows Server. We'll go ahead and click Next. Once again, we'll leave all these options as default and we'll leave our stack failure options to roll back all stack resources. Scroll down to the bottom and we'll click on Next. Lastly, we've got the review of all of our settings. We'll scroll down and we're going to click on Create Stack. Now, once again, similar with the Linux EC2 instance, we we're going to see the events progress here as we click on Refresh. And again, we're waiting for the left hand side here for our stack name, Windows EC2 web server to be in a complete, a create complete state. And there we go, we are in the create complete state for our CloudFormation stack. Now, one thing I just wanted to show you as well, if we click on resources tab, so remember in the script, which I'm just going to pull up now. So under resources, we had the web server one resource, which is our EC2 instance. And the second resource we had was our security group called Web Server Security Group. Now, if I return to CloudFormation, you can see here that these are the two resources here, Web Server Security Group and Web Server 1, which is the EC2 instance. And both of those resources are in a create complete state as well. Now, we'll head on over to our EC2. And because I'm running this back to back with our Linux stack that we created, we'll still see that our web server one, which was the Linux one, is in the terminated state here. So that will take a little bit of time to flush out from the console. Uh, the one that we're going to be concentrating on is the Windows server, which is this one here, web server one in the running state. And again, we're just waiting for two out of two status checks before we proceed. So we'll go ahead and keep clicking on refresh until that happens. Okay, status checks have now passed. So we've got our two out of two. I'm going to click on web server one, our Windows instance. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go down here. We're going to click on the public IPv4 address. Now we're going to open up a new tab and we're going to browse to HTTP colon slash slash the public IPv4 address of this EC2 instance. And that should take us to our Windows 2019 web server index.html page. And there's our page. So sysadmin tutorials EC2 Windows demo. We've got our server host name, our instance type, the operating system, so Windows Server 2019 data center. We've got our internal IP address, our external IP address, and our public DNS address. Now you can see how powerful CloudFormation is. It saves a ton of time. And if you're repeating the same process over and over again, let's say creating the same EC2 instances, then I highly recommend that you use CloudFormation to automate as much of that as possible. Not only can you use CloudFormation for EC2 instances, but you can also use CloudFormation for many other AWS services. So you could create an entire networking stack and then finish off with creating EC2 instances. And you can automate that entire process through CloudFormation and through YAML or JSON files. Now, the only thing left to do here is to clean up. So let's go back to our AWS console. We'll flip back to CloudFormation. We'll select our stack, Windows EC2 web server, and then we'll click on delete. I'll then go ahead, click on delete stack to confirm and our delete is now in progress. Now that completes this tutorial on using AWS CloudFormation to automate the creation of EC2 instances. You can see how easy and how fast and efficient it is. Don't forget to grab those YAML files. The link for those files are in the description below. That'll redirect you to my GitHub page. So you can grab those files, you can change them around as you want, or you can just run them as we did here in the tutorial. Now guys, thanks very much for watching. Please give a thumbs up if you did like this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below as we'll be bringing you many more videos this year. Thanks again for watching and we're gonna see you again in the next video. Bye for now.